Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. Today we are going to be doing an updated tour um, and just showing you how I've set up my IKEA greenhouse cabinet Mills Bow Tall Edition. I did this video a few weeks ago showing you how I've currently styled and set up and showing you all the plants inside my Mills Bow Wide Cabinet. So if you haven't seen that video, I will link it down below, but today we are going to be covering the tall cabinet. I've had this cabinet for coming up to three years now, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, I've had it set up in many different ways. I've used a lot of different accessories in it. I've grown a lot of different plants in it, and I've just enjoyed it so much. It's not only a beautiful way to display plants, but it's also very functional. My plants do really well in here. I feel like I've given this whole spiel when I talked about the Millsbo Wide, but yes, I am a very big fan of both of my IKEA greenhouse cabinets and um, most of the plants in here are very happy. So I'm excited to take you through it. Again, I'm gonna start off the video by showing you um, kind of where I've put it in my home because if you're new here, I recently moved a couple of months ago, so I had to obviously take apart the cabinets and build them and like figure out whether, where they're going to go in my home and everything. So I'll show you um, where I have it and the plants that I have around it as well. Um, so I guess we'll start off with that and then we will head inside of the cabinet. Okay, so sorry for the glare. It is reflecting my windows that are across from it here. Um, but yeah, so I kind of have the cabinet in, this is our dining room. It's a bit of a mess right now. I was doing some plant things, but this is our dining room. And, um, we decided to put the cabinet here because there's this little like part of the wall that it just kind of fits perfectly in. And it also gets some light from the windows that are near it. So it's kind of the perfect spot. Obviously the cabinet has lighting in it, but it works well for having plants around the outside of the cabinet, which I think looks really cute. I'm actually really, really happy with how this cabinet looks here. I love it. I'm trying to back up so you can get a better view, but it kind of gets blocked by the table and don't mind all my boxes over there. That is my plant shelf that I have yet to build. I am getting to it next week, you guys, okay? But yeah, I'm really happy with having the cabinet here. And another reason that we chose to put it here is because the previous owner left a bunch of damage on the wall here on a lot of the walls actually but it's quite bad on this one it's like all behind here and big screw holes and like paint um torn off so the cabinet works well to kind of block that mostly and at least like distract from it you know so that's another reason that i chose to put it here so like i said since it does get some light from the windows it gets some light from this window here um, not a lot, but it also gets light from the windows across from it, which are south facing and there's this stacked window situation. So this one is quite high and it does provide some light to the plants on top of the cabinet. So I'm obviously taking advantage of that and popping some plants up here and I just love the way they look. First of all, we have my beautiful Monstera Adansonii. This is just the green version, the wide form, and I love it. Honestly, Adansonii is one of my favorite plants. Like, it's an oldie but a goodie. Look at how beautiful. Like, are you kidding me? Oh, it just looks gorgeous. It did struggle a bit from the move, mostly just because of my neglect and my lack of watering while I was trying to get my life organized, but I think it's doing a little bit better now. Um, yeah, I just love it. I think it looks so pretty just kind of cascading down the cabinet. Yeah, I am a really, really big fan of that. And then next to the Adansonii, we have my Hoya polyneura, which is another plant that I have really, really been appreciating lately. And I also love the way that it's just kind of like cascading down the cabinet. I mean, it's not really cascading down in front of the cabinet. It will be though, if I leave it here. Um, but it's just kind of like the way it's laying is just really cute. So yeah, my Hoya polyneura. This is a plant that suffered from thrips two years ago now, coming up to two years. And I saved just one single cutting and that's how um, I've grown this plant back. So it's finally turning into like a nice full plant again, which is really nice. I kind of wanna chop and prop this actually and fill it out even more soon. But yeah, it's just a gorgeous plant. I love this one so much. It looks really healthy and shiny and yeah, she's doing real well. And then coming down this side of the cabinet is my beautiful string of hearts. This is just the, the regular form of string of hearts and it's quite long. 
it pretty much goes to the floor but it's so happy hanging on there it gets light from the grow lights in the cabinet and then obviously just like ambient light from the rest of the windows but it's growing a ton like you can see all of the new little shoots that are coming out everywhere it's super super happy and i just think that it looks so pretty going down the side of the cabinet like oh i just love it so so much this is gonna look a lot better once there's not just boxes here and I need to deal with all of the cords still. That's kind of been on the back burner for now. Charging my e-reader. I just started A Court of Wings and Ruin, the third Akatar book, but anyways. Beside the cabinet, we have my lovely variegated syngonium hanging out there looking cute. These new leaves. This one looks all white, unfortunately, but this one looks like it has some green on it. And then on the other side of the cabinet, next to the door here, we have my pride and joy, my beautiful philodendron majestic. And this plant is honestly almost at the top of the cabinet, which is crazy, um, but it just looks gorgeous. I am so in love with how this looks, just kind of tucked in here beside the cabinet. It's growing so well. It looks just amazing. Fits in that spot beautifully and yeah, I just, I, I love it so, so much. I'm just super happy with how this whole situation is looking. I will say it's hard to get a decent shot because the table is kind of in the way, but hopefully you guys can get an idea of how this looks. So that's the overview of the outside. Now we are going to head inside the cabinet. Um, I'm probably going to take each plant out and show it to you and kind of talk about it, but I will give you an overview of how it's looking in here um, because honestly, in my opinion, I think that is looking really good lately, like probably one of the best that this cabinet has ever looked. Um, and before we open it, I will show you that the humidity there is 92. Oh, it's focusing on the ficus. The humidity is 92% because I just watered this morning about six hours ago now. So after I water, the humidity shoots up. This cabinet is weather stripped, so it retains humidity pretty well. Um, after watering, it will, can be in the 90s, and then de just it just depends on when I've watered. It depends on the weather for the day, you know, how hot it is, is it raining? It depends on a lot of factors for how humid this cabinet is, but it ranges from anywhere between, I would say, 70% to in the 90s. Like if all the moss poles are dry and the plants need to be watered, it'll probably be around 70%, but right now we're at 92%, so um, quite moist. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open her up. I'll turn the fans off too because they're quite aggressive. I have my power bar all set up again as well, which is nice. I'm just gonna turn those guys off. Speaking of the fans, I will say that um, I used to have them on a 24 hour schedule, like running at all times, but now I only have them running during the day and then I have them off at night because I was just finding with the temperatures that we're having, like this cabinet will hang around 30% during the day. Right now it's 27.3, um, but once we get later in the day, that will probably even go up to like 29. So it gets very, very warm. Um, my house gets very warm and the cabinets get even warmer than just like the temperature in the house. So since since it's been so hot, the plants have just been drying out like crazy. Um, so I decided to turn off the fans just to kind of maintain just the moisture a little bit longer in here. So I don't have to water every two days. Anyways, I've been doing that for a couple weeks and it seems to be going really well. These fans are really powerful, so I think only running for 12 hours is completely fine, honestly. Actually, I think I run them for 14. Um, I run them the same schedule as I run the lights, which is 14 hours from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. But yeah, I just think it makes a big difference having that little break of not having the fans running. And I haven't noticed any negative effects from that or anything. Okay, before we even do anything in here, I'm gonna remove this guy. This is my ficus villosa, um, which has been living in a terrarium and I'm experimenting with uh, acclimatizing it to cabinet conditions. Um, but if I leave the door open and leave it in here for this whole tour, it's honestly probably gonna shrivel up. This is one of the most sensitive plants that I have. Of course, it's a ficus, um, but no, really it, it will shrivel up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put it in a little cloche while I'm filming. But this guy is um, living in there for now as part of an, a little experiment. There you go, in your bougie accommodations. 
Okay, so I just want to give you a little bit of an overview of this top shelf and kind of how I have it organized. I think that it looks really good. I don't know how well that will translate onto camera, but um, yeah, I have a few smaller moss pole plants in here. Um, I'm trying to like play with having plants at different heights so I'll use a second pot to boost some of them up or if I think that they need to be closer to the light I will boost them up. A lot of just smaller plants in here right now. As soon as plants get big or more mature they kind of have to be moved out of the cabinet. They outgrow it so that kind of keeps the plants in here always changing. I'm always swapping them out because some plants um, outgrow it and then other plants need the cabinet conditions to get started or get going or whatever. The fact that plants outgrow the cabinet kind of makes it so that the plants are always being switched up in here, which I don't mind, honestly. Um, I recently moved my philodendron, sorry the floor is so squeaky, my goodness, but I recently moved my philodendron gigas out of the cabinet and it's adapted to room conditions really, really well. It's put out a couple of leaves since then and yeah, it's just living its best life, honestly. I don't typically have problems acclimating them out of the cabinet, luckily. Um, maybe since my ambient humidity is quite high. I mean, I haven't tried to do it with any plant that's like particularly difficult. It's mostly just philodendrons and things like that. All three of these have actually been acclimated out of the cabinet. Actually, I think all four of these. I think my Glorious used to be in there too, but my Brandy came out of the cabinet and I was really worried about it, but it honestly has been doing amazing. Same with my Bromarks Fantasy. I was really apprehensive about taking that out of the cabinet, but it's been doing super well also. So yeah, they kind of outgrow it, especially my climbing plants. As you need to add extensions, there's just obviously no way that they're going to fit in the cabinet unless I took out the shelf and just did this as like a climbing plant cabinet, which I have seen people do and I do think that that's cool. But for me, it just kind of works better using it for my smaller plants and then transitioning them out of the cabinet. Anyways, yeah, this is the overview. I'm still using the wire grid. I have these more heavy duty suction cups that I'm using to hold it up now and that's going well for me. I love having some um, trailing plants kind of cascading down from the baskets. I think that that looks really, really cute. And I love just like clipping some plants onto the grid like that as well. And then down here we have the second shelf, which has um, pretty much all like kind of trailing Hoya in the top basket there. And then lower down we have mostly, well, a few anthurium, a few anthurium, and then um, a couple alocasia as well. This guy clipped over here. So that's an overview of what the second shelf looks like. Okay, I'm gonna start by going through all of the plants that are in this upper section here. So I guess I'll start on this side. First of all, in this little bubble DIY coffee cup thing, dome thing that I'm using, um, in here is another little ficus velosa. This is actually just a bottom cut without any leaves. I just wanna see if it's gonna sprout any leaves. I think it will. But we'll see. I recently cut up my ficus velosa into a bunch of different pieces, so I have multiples just kind of around that I'm experimenting with. And then next to that is my little Hoya Serpents, which is looking so cute. I love Hoya Serpents, like how adorable. I love the tiny little leaves. I've had this for a while now, like at least a couple of years, um, maybe even like two and a half years and, or no, two years, maybe just over two years I've had it. It's not huge, but it grows steadily. I've been really happy with it. I love the little tiny fuzzy leaves and um, just like what the leaves look like close up. They actually do look like little snake heads. Like it's just such a cool plant. And the baby leaves come in so cute and small. Look at those. It's adorable. I'm dumping soil onto the floor. This plant has always lived in here since I got it. So I'm not really in any rush to take it out. And since it stays small, it just, it doesn't really need to come out. Um, and then next to that, well, oops, I dropped that. Okay, next to that on the shelf in the back is actually an anthurium that I have in perlite in another one of these kind of dome cup things. This is my anthurium velvet mask for Sherman hybrid from Cartel Dawn. And if you watched my video where I repotted all of my Cartel Dawn anthurium recently, 
This guy was rotting, unfortunately, and I did pot it up into potting mix in that video, but it was just looking droopy and I got nervous. I got very nervous and stressed and I was like, you know, I'm not playing this game today. I'm just putting him in perlite and giving him high humidity until it gives me more healthy roots. So that is where we're at right now. So I just have perlite. I think there's a little bit of LECA that got mixed into here. And then I have Super Thrive water in here and obviously this dome to keep the humidity high. It's looking really good. I'm just waiting to see roots, but it looks like it's totally perked up again. So I'm not worried about it. I think he's gonna pull through. But yeah, this is my one Ethereum that had rotted from that haul. Um, so he's just kind of recuperating in there for now. Next to that, we have Monstera Obliqua babies. There's three of them in there. I have a lot of Monstera Obliqua propagations, so they're just kind of everywhere right now. And then we have, oh my goodness, why, oh, why does it do that to me? It'll just randomly, like a chunk of it will fall out. And I'm just like, hello, like what is going on here? Um, I was just going to tell you about how well this plant is doing when I grabbed it. Uh, it's still doing well. It just, I don't know what is wrong with this sometimes. Like the roots are so shallow on some of them. I mean, I think it's a really shallow rooted plant in general, but sometimes a whole strand will just come busting out of here. I'm just going to kind of wrap them around the top here. I don't know. Okay, anyways, the rest of my string of turtles or Peperomia prostrata has been doing really well. The best this plant has ever done. I thought I was gonna lose this plant and then it started growing. Um, so as you can see, it looks quite healthy. Like, yeah, he's doing pretty well and getting quite long too, which is cool. So I've really been enjoying this plant lately. Um, the pattern on the leaves is so pretty. I don't know why I just suddenly got happy. Maybe the heat, because um, that's probably the biggest thing that's changed in this cabinet. So any of the plants that really were struggling and now are doing well, um, I think that it's temperature related, most likely. But yeah, I love this plant. I hope that it just continues to do well. And I hope that the strands stop just like falling out on me. Um, but yeah, I think that it looks really cute just trailing in the back here. And then the last one that I have on the shelf up there is my Iron Cross Begonia. This is just a little propagation. It's still living in moss. It's currently giving me its third leaf. And this Begonia is so cute. It's like purple and um, fuzzy or hairy, I guess. It has like little hairs on the leaves. I don't know how well the camera will pick it up, but yeah, really cute. I don't really know much about this Begonia. I think it's a, is it a Rex Begonia? I don't know, it looks like a, a rhiz, rhizomatis. It looks like the rhizome type begonia. I don't know, but yeah, really cute. And I'm glad that it's doing well. I'll probably pot that up soon too. Okay, and then on the second little shelf over here is my variegated alocasia dragon scale, which gave me this new leaf. Look at how stunning that is. Oh my goodness, I almost fell off my chair when I saw it. It is so, so pretty. If you saw my unboxing of this video, you would know that this plant had some completely white leaves. So I was a little bit worried about it, but it gave me this leaf and I was very relieved. Um, it's just like perfect. Like I couldn't ask for a better specimen when I'm looking at this leaf and this leaf. Um, however, it looks like we are currently growing another all white leaf. So yeah. We'll see what happens after that leaf, but I mean, I chose this one and I knew that there was a risk of it just putting out all white leaves, but as long as it doesn't put out every leaf being all white, it's fine, you know? Um, but yeah, this leaf is just like, oh my goodness, I am in love with it. So yeah, this plant has been doing quite well. I need to pot this up soon too. It's still just in sphagnum moss. And then I'll move over to here and do the plants that are hanging on the side. First of all, we have my Anthurium Goliath Forgetii hybrid from Cartel Dunn, and it's doing really well. I don't think I have, oh, there's just like the be very beginnings of a new leaf going to emerge from there. So that'll be really cute to see. I love this one. Um, I just love how dark it is. So yeah, I've really been admiring this one a lot. Also, you'll see that I added uh, a layer of sphagnum moss to the top of my Anthurium after I uploaded my 
video repotting them. People were saying to do that, and I was like, you know, good idea. Um, I kind of had planned to do it anyways, but I just didn't do it in that video. It was kind of in the evening when I was filming and I just didn't get to it. But then I saw y'all commenting that and I was like, you are correct, I need to do that. So I made it a priority to get some sphagnum on there just to uh, retain more moisture since it is such a chunky potting mix. But yeah, they're all doing well. Um, but this is the, the Goliath Forgetii hybrid. Hanging next to that guy, we have my Doriaki Silver Red Crystallinum Hybrid. This guy is doing really well also. It has three leaves now. And again, I added the sphagnum moss. So yeah, it's been really happy since I repotted it, which is great. And then we'll move down here to the plants on the main shelf. The first one that I have growing in here is my variegated heartleaf philodendron. And this plant is doing really well. It's actually starting to attach to the moss pole, which is exciting. And the leaves that it's giving me just have beautiful, beautiful variegation. So I'm really excited to see this one grow. This is just on the small version of the thickly poles. But yeah, I feel like it's finally, like it took a little bit of time to establish and now it is going to be taking off. And then we have my Alocasia Silver Dragon which again is doing really well. This, oh my goodness. So I got this in a trade like right before I moved, like a couple of weeks before I moved probably. And I was so excited about it. And then I moved here and I potted it up. I think I did that in like my first video that I filmed in this house. I potted it up and then I put it stupidly in front of the south facing window. And it was like, dried up to a crisp. I thought it was gonna die. I thought for sure I was gonna lose it. I'll put a photo if I can find it, but I was like, oh my goodness, this is so embarrassing. Um, but luckily I watered it, popped it in the cabinet and it survived and now it's doing really well. So thank goodness, because that would have freaking sucked if I would have lost it. But um, no, here she is today living to tell the tale. Next, we have my Philodendron Soderoy Baby, which I got a few months ago now. And um, it was really, really struggling for a while, but now it finally seems to be doing better. Like it was not even wanting, like the leaves kept getting stuck. It was not wanting to unfurl just a nice leaf, but now it's actually unfurling the leaves. So I'm like, okay, we're making progress here. We're making progress. So um, yeah, this is what it's looking like now. I mean, not a ton of progress, but it's not looking awful anymore. So I'm really glad about that. And then another plant that's just on a small moss pole. This is my Jesenia pothos, which is a really cool pothos that you don't see very often. It has like chartreuse variegation, like very like neon green variegation. I think that it is so, so pretty. And I'm really excited to grow this out and to get some bigger leaves on it. Um, it is also just starting to root into the moss pole, I believe. I'm kind of guiding it towards it. I'm not 100% sure if it's latched in yet, but if it's not, it will be soon. And this is another one that uh, has just kind of taken some time to establish, but now I think that it's gonna start growing really well for me. Look at how pretty. I got this as a one leaf cutting and I was trying to root it and then I did root it and then I rotted it and then I had to root it again. And it's just been a bit of a procedure, but here we are today. She is finally getting established and um, yeah, she's, she's gorgeous. So I can't wait for her to get even bigger than this. Another pot of a few Monstera Obliqua babies. This is an Anthurium Forgetii, which is one of the Anthurium that I struggle with the most. I have a really hard time growing Forgetii for some unknown reason. Newest leaf came in kind of janky, um, but I mean, the last one looks really good. So we'll see. We'll see what time brings with this one. But um, anyways, it is really cute. I want it to do well. I really want it to do well. I love Forgetii, but I have like five of them or something and none of them look amazing. Okay, next we have my Philodendron Silver Sword which is now on a moss pole, which is very exciting because I had really been wanting to get my small juvenile one onto a moss pole again so it could mature more quickly. Um, so here it is on its moss pole. There's actually a couple, I think three. Yeah, I have three different vines potted in here, I believe. And it has a, this is actually the new style of moss pole from Thickly, the third generation. I put this on the moss pole in a Patreon video a couple of weeks ago and um, it's doing really well so far. So 
I'm hoping to see roots in that poll soon, but yeah, I'm just so thrilled to be growing out Silver Sword again because y'all know how much I have loved this plant in the past and I really, really want a more mature version of this again. Oh, maybe I have four growing in here, honestly. I think there's four. Wow. Okay, so next, this guy lives at the back of this first shelf and this is my Anthurium Magnificum Luxuriance Hybrid. I also have the Crystal Meg Luxuriance Hybrid, which lives in the bottom part of this cabinet, so we'll see that later. This guy has been doing really well. This is the newest leaf right here. I was a little disappointed that it got torn when it was coming out. It seems so hard to get a leaf that is not damaged. I mean, actually most of them look pretty good on this plant. This one's damaged, but um, it's still beautiful, even though it did get a little bit beat up. It's just such a gorgeous plant. It's dark and textured and I love it, but it doesn't have the oil spill kind of look that the Crystal Mag Luxuriance does. Both of my Luxuriance hybrids are gonna have to come out of the cabinet soon, so hopefully that transition goes well for them. But they're just growing so well that, you know, their time is almost up in there. I got this as well as the other Lux hybrid as just a tiny little seedling almost exactly one year ago from North Shore Tropicals, actually I think 13 months ago, so just over a year. And I can't believe that they're like full-fledged plants now, it's just so crazy. But yeah, I love them both so much. Um, this guy is actually working on a new leaf there, so we'll see what that looks like when it comes out. I'm really excited. I've been enjoying Anthurium so much lately, so um, yeah. A little update on that one. Okay, and then the last one for this top shelf is my Hoya Caudata Sumatra. This is one of my favorite Hoya right now, just because it's doing so well. It's really just been taking off this summer. Like, I can't believe how full this is looking. Like, look how many leaves. I'm gonna have to put it on a new trellis soon because it's really, really outgrowing this one. Um, it even has like vines up the back of it. It's just, yeah. It's doing amazing, which is great. These are all new leaves right there coming in. Look at those. Oh, it's just so pretty. I love this plant so much. I've never had it bloom for me, but I really, really want this to bloom for me one day. It has really like feathery, fluffy looking blooms and I just adore them. So my fingers are crossed that, um, that this will bloom one day. I think it needs to be repotted when I give it a new trellis as well. It just kind of needs it needs um, bigger accommodations in all aspects, so that'll be on my list. It's not urgent or anything, it's still doing really well. Um, but yeah, just such such a cool Hoya, and um, it's just, it's living its best life, honestly. Okay, now we're gonna go through the plants that are living in the bottom section of the cabinet. There's not as many down here, so it shouldn't take us too long to go through. Um, this guy, right at the front, is my beautiful Anthurium moodianum. This is a fairly new leaf. I was gonna say the newest, but that's not true because we actually have a baby leaf that's just started emerging. Look at that, they come in so dark and beautiful. Oh my goodness. I love this Anthurium even more than I thought I was going to like it. So I'm just so excited to watch it mature. It's been doing really well since the repot. Um, yeah, honestly, just so, so easy going so far. I've only had this for um, just over two months now, but my first impressions are definitely that this is gonna be a really hardy Anthurium. So yeah, really, really happy with this guy. And then over here, I have this guy kind of boosted on another pot just so that it can get enough light. And that is my variegated Alocasia fry deck, which has been doing really well since I unboxed it like six weeks ago. Look at how beautiful, oh my goodness. I just love the variegation. I still can't believe I have this Alocasia. I just, yeah, wow. I'm also really into variegated alocasia right now. I'm into a lot of things right now, okay? I'm into begonia, anthurium, hoya, variegated alocasia, pinguicula. <laughs> the list probably goes on, but um, yeah, those are plants that I'm just kind of like focused on right now. Um, but yeah, this is one of my three variegated alocasia and I'm in love with it. We have a new leaf on the way, so I can't wait to see what that's gonna look like. It's so fun when new leaves come in because it's kind of like a surprise until it unfurls, you know? 
that's kind of how it works with variegated plants but it's just extra excited when it's on my variegated alocasia because they're still so new to me just variegated alocasia in general so yeah really really exciting plant in front of that we have yet another monstera obliqua baby three four of them in here actually hanging out this is my tree fern fiber mix which um, i've really been liking so far if you watched my uh, prep for a week of plant care video my like kind of organization video that I did I made a new potting mix with tree fern fiber and I've been so happy with it so far obviously I haven't been using it long enough to give like my full thoughts or anything but first impressions again like so good okay and then behind that we have my what is this called again I was gonna say discoria discolor but that is a completely different plant I don't know why this is blanking on me. It's a jewel orchid. Um, and I just can't think of the name right now. Anyways, it's my beautiful dark velvety jewel orchid. I recently chopped it to propagate it. So that's why it's looking a little bit stubby right now. But um, yeah, it's doing really well in there as well. I've always grown that one in a cabinet. I think it would do fine out of the cabinet, but it just stays in there because it's living its best life. And then we have my Anthurium HU lives on this shelf and this one is doing really well also. Not really too much to say about it that I haven't said about my other cartel done Anthurium. Recently was repotted, doing great. I can see that I'm going to get a new leaf soon. It's like looking chubby, you know, um, but it hasn't started emerging yet. And then this is actually a fun update because this um, Piper Crocatum, I believe, uh, has finally started doing something for me. <laughs> I've struggled with this plant for basically the past year. It just never was really happy. At first, I mean, it was my fault. I was underwatering it and then it just, I don't know, it was just taking its time getting established and everything. But now I'm more on top of my watering. It's getting more warmth and um, just more consistent conditions, I guess. And now it has just started growing for me. Like, look at these beautiful big leaves I'm getting. Like, how gorgeous is that? Look at it now. <gasps> I just can't believe how good it's looking. We have a new little leaf coming in there. Yeah, it's growing up this clear trellis. I need to pin it again to the trellis. But yeah, it's just, I'm so happy with how well it's doing. It looks so gorgeous in here. I just love it. It's so different from everything that I have, you know? So I really, really appreciate this one. This is my only Piper. Okay, and then we have my um, other Luxurians hybrid that I was talking about. I'm going to back this up a little bit. This is my Crystal Mag Luxurians hybrid. And this is my favorite, not only of my two Lux hybrids, but of... Uh, pretty much all my Anthurium. This is definitely in my top three. I'm just obsessed with it. Now it's very similar to the Magnificum Luxurians that I showed you a few minutes ago, but the difference is that this one has a very kind of oil spill sheen to it. So it looks purple. Like it doesn't, it doesn't often show up on camera, but in person in when it catches the light, it has a purple sheen to it. And it's just like, oh my goodness, nothing can beat it, honestly. It is so, so gorgeous. Oh man, I just love, I like guard this plant with my life when I see a new leaf coming in. I'm like, nothing can be near it. Like, don't even look at it wrong because I don't want the new leaves to come out damaged. And I'm so, so happy with how this one has come in. This was the last one that came out and this came out during the move. And we were being so careful not to bump it or anything because I really wanted it to come in nicely and it did. So the efforts paid off, but yeah, wow. Just like, oh, such a stunning Ethereum. I can't get over it. I cannot get over it. I'm in love. I'm in love. Yeah. If I had to choose between the two of them, the two hybrids, I would definitely pick this one. The other one's gorgeous too though. And then we have my silly little Syndapsis Silver Cloud, uh, which was really struggling for like two years. And then I moved and it randomly gave me this massive leaf, which this is just like hilarious to me. So yeah, that's what the plant is looking like. Like what the actual heck? <laughs> it's so funny. Um, 
this is actually the newest leaf, this small one. So it gave me that massive leaf and then it went back to giving me a small leaf. So I'm just like, okay, like what was that about? What was that silly little moment about? I don't know, but imagine if it gave me all big leaves like this, I'd probably croak. It's so, so beautiful. I don't really care how big they are. I'm just glad that it's not crisping anymore. I don't know what, like if it's just temperature or what the heck, but this uh, plant would always crisp up on me and now it's not doing that. So I'm just stoked about that, you know? Okay, and then hanging on the side, we have my little Alocasia olanii. Uh, this is a new one that I got from Wee Pot Plants like six weeks ago, and it's doing really well. We have three leaves now. I love the dark color on this. I love the veining, um, and this plant has like ruffled edges, which is another really cool thing about it. So just like a super, super unique um, alocasia. Yeah, it's just gorgeous, and so far it seems to be easy going. It's just, it's growing away in there. And then we just have my Hoya that I keep on the top shelf here. So we have my Hoya Hushkaliana variegata or Hushkaliana inner variegated, I guess. And um, this plant has always just done so, so well for me. I've even chopped it multiple times and it just grows like a beast. It's always putting out new leaves. It looks so pretty. It sun stresses pink under the lights. Very, I mean, for me, it's very easy going, but I've heard a lot of people struggle with this. So I don't know if I'm just lucky or what, but for me, it's been very easy. However, the one thing is that it's never bloomed for me and look how big and lush and happy and healthy it is. And I just don't get it because I see a lot of other people's um, Hush Kleana, like the variegated ones like this blooming. And even when they're just like small plants and I'm like, what the heck, mine, I've had it for a couple of years now. It's a bit of a beast and nay a bloom, nay a bloom. So I'm patiently waiting for her to bloom because these have kind of unique blooms. So I really want to see it, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should get back on my orchid mist game because I have definitely not been keeping up with that. I'll be real with you. So maybe I'll have to um, get back on track with that and start spraying to get a bloom out of that guy. Okay, and then next we have, oh my goodness, I'm obsessed with this one. I love it so much. This is my little grape Hoya or olive Hoya. This is, um, what's the actual name for this? Like Hoya, it's either 4270 or 7240. I'm so bad with when plant names are like numbers. I just can't wrap my head around that. But anyways, um, this is just like the cutest round leaf little Hoya in the world. Look at it. Oh, I love it. And I love how dark the leaves are and a little bit of splashing. It's literally just perfect, like perfection, perfection. Yeah, I love it so much. I got this from Plant Haven Toronto um, and it's still in moss. I need to pot it. It's just been so happy. I haven't even bothered, you know, like it's been growing and oh, it just looks so good. I love it. Look at this leaf that's like half splash. Wow. I love the chubby round little leaves and it's like soft too, especially the bottom, the underneath of the leaves. Ooh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, really, really cool Hoya. And then next we have my Hoya biakensis, which has just been doing the most for me. I got this as just a small little plant. It was in sphagnum for a while and um, I just, I don't know, I didn't really pay much attention to it, but now recently, well, I guess over like the past couple of months, it's really started growing and I'm like, wow, like it has been catching my eye a lot because it's just, I don't know, it's coming into itself and it's looking beautiful. Like the new growth that it's giving me is just gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Such a pretty Hoya. The splash on there, the shape of the leaves. Um, yeah, it's so, so pretty. I really, really love it. No idea what the blooms look like on this. Also no idea what the blooms look like on this. I'll have to look, look both of them up, but for now I've just been appreciating the foliage and I love this little drippy pot that this guy lives in. Like this whole situation is just so cute to me. But yeah, I can't believe how much it's growing. Like I really can't believe it. It's just doing amazing. Look at how gorgeous. I love it. And I guess that that was the last one.